And we're going to continue to talk about what's going on in Iran. There is something very different about what's going on now, uh, certainly in terms of the attention that, it, that it's getting, but also the public reaction, the sheer courage and bravery of people who are opposing this hardline Islamist 43-year-old regime that seems to be getting more and more enraged with a population which definitely are not behaving. I'm going to read you, and by the way, Nazanin Zaghari Radcliffe, who was in prison for years on completely ridiculous charges, and we know her story. She's written in the Times today, and it's brilliant. Um, but this was from Janice Turner, who I always read, and this was in the, uh, in, in the Times. This was from Friday. I'm going to read you the first two paragraphs as a way of sort of um, getting into the story. Uh, Maza Amini was not a dissident or a protester, just a 22-year-old on a day trip to Tehran with her brother before her college course in microbiology began. She was not even bareheaded, but the way she wore her hijab in the loose style of young Iranians dark fringe peeping out enraged a passing morality patrol bundled off the street into a van taken to a re-education center to be schooled in modesty maza died exactly how is disputed officials claim she collapsed from a heart condition but her family insists she was healthy and her brother saw bruises on her corpse the very ordinariness of this dead young woman is why Iran is now in flames. Masa could be your sister, your daughter, laughing with her friends. She could be you. Now that is an extraordinary piece of uh, writing. It moved me, and I'm glad that we are talking about this, and we must continue, and why not? Delighted to welcome Mariam Namazi, uh, a British-Iranian human rights activist who fled Iran in 1980 with her family to the program. Also with us, Sarah Saheli, who is a British-Iranian who helped to organize yesterday's demonstration outside the Iranian embassy in London. She has active uh, family, family active, um, in these protests currently going on in, in Iran. So, so, so ponder that uh, as we speak. Mariam Namazi, if I could start with you first, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, isn't it great, actually, that we're talking about this? Because we must yes. talk about this. It's all very well for us to sit here and um, sort of point fingers and everything. But there is something so terribly wrong about the life of women in Iran and no doubt elsewhere as well that um, I'm glad we are talking about it. Why this incident um, and why this reaction? One of the things is that, of course, uh, with the case of Masa Amini, I think it showed very clearly, uh, without any masks, how brutal the regime is against people, but particularly women. Now, the fact of the matter is, yes, Masa wasn't at a protest, but this is how women are treated every day on the streets. The morality police are part of the organs of the state. Uh, they constantly harass, threaten, beat, arrest, imprison women for improper veiling. As you know, veiling is compulsory in Iran, but nonetheless, uh, millions of women are arrested and harassed every year uh, for what's considered improper veiling. And what we have to understand here is that what women do in their daily lives and what people do in their daily lives is in constant contradiction with the Iranian regime. And that's why it oft, always has to use brute force in order to um, impose its very, uh, any of its rules, you know, whether it's got to do with dress, whether it's got to do with people holding hands on the streets, whether it's got to do with what people think, what they say. And with Massa's case, I don't think there's any, um, um, any confusion on what's happened. You know, the doctors at Castro, uh, hospital where she was taken said very clearly that her skull was fractured. Uh, if you look at pictures of her in coma at the hospital, you see blood trickling out of her ears. Uh, doctors have said that this is what had happened, but the Iranian regime has censored that information. Yeah. So it's very clear she died in custody. They killed her. And I think that is something that we need to say very clearly. Right. Well, the President Raisi's uh, re regime, I mean, it stops the internet, it arrests journalists, it, it's, it's um, you know, it, it blocks messaging services like WhatsApp. There's a reason for all of that. And, uh, and a couple of those reasons are uh, Ghazale Chalavi, age 32, shot in the head. Uh, Hanana Kian, 23, killed in Naushar. Um, 
why won't they change this regime? What is it about the veil which is so central to their brutality? I think one of the things that we have to realize is that, yes, the regime is shooting and killing protesters. They have done so for the past 40 years. But I think what has inspired the world and uh, really uh, sh shaken everyone uh, to their core is the bravery and courage of young women uh, and men in the streets in Iran. They are shouting uh, for you know, the main slogan is women, life, freedom. This is in direct con contradiction to what the Islamic regime has been saying for 40-something years. Uh, it, this is a, a theocracy where women are considered subhuman, being a woman is a crime. And, of course, the imposition of the veil is central to uh, this regime's existence. And that's why there's such a battle over, over this issue. I think... Uh, what we have to recognize here today is the fact that there is something very special happening in Iran. It is special not just for people in Iran, but for the entire world. This is a women's revolution. This is women side by side with men leading a fight against theocracy in the 21st century mm. with secular feminist slogans. You know, women, life, freedom. We don't want an Islamic regime. We don't want dictatorship. Uh, and this is something that needs to be supported by people everywhere. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, Western governments continue to support the Iranian regime. Even if you look at the statement that was given by the UK Foreign Office, you know, they've, they've just said that they're concerned mm. over allegations and they would like like the Iranian regime to investigate. But this is like asking the Nazis to investigate what happened to Jews in Nazi Germany or the, the apartheid regime in South Africa to investigate what, what happened to, to black people in, in that country. So this is an absurdity. We don't want Western governments to intervene. This is the task of people in Iran. But at least stop maintaining the regime, stop legitimizing it. One of the shockers that was uh, uh, confiscated, that was taken from uh, the Iranian government official, uh, you know, security forces by protesters uh, was made in the USA. You know, stop all of that and let people in Iran put an end to this regime once and for all. It will benefit the entire world to have uh, this uh, theocracy change. It will affect yep. the, the might and power of Islamists throughout the world, including in Britain, where it is a strong, has a stronghold. You, you couldn't have been clearer, Maryam Namazi. Thank you very much indeed for coming on the program this morning, British Iranian human rights activist. You can read her writings. Brilliant. Uh,